Yeah. Right, I'm joined by Lee Walia, former professional footballer, my good friend, played in the Premiership. Right, first of all, I want to explain to everyone how this interview came about. So you came round my house, was it? Three, four weeks ago? Yeah. You said you retired from football and uh, you were going to come down in here to train the next day on a Monday. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to interview Lee Walia. So you went, you went away, you went out, and I thought, when he comes down on Monday, I'm going to interview him ask him about his career and all that kind of stuff and then you said you couldn't make it to training. <laughs> and then, mad thing, about two weeks ago you messaged me an interview you did on, um, on YouTube yeah. and I was like, I can't believe it, yeah. like literally stole my thunder and you said we'd do it anyway, so yeah. that's why we're here. <laughs> For sure. um, so basically, I wanted to just speak to you about your career, growing up in this area, mm -hmm. and you know the mad thing, I was, obviously I was thinking about it after you retired, I remember us sitting in Dane Park, we must have been about... 13, 14 years old, and it's just us two sitting on the bench. You looked me square in the eye and you went, I'm going to make it. Mm. And I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everyone says that as kids, yeah. isn't it? And you went, nah, nah, I'm definitely going to make it to Premiership. <laughs> and you said it different to everyone else. Like, as I'm, like our friends growing up, you said it different to everyone else. And I, I looked at you and I thought, you know what? He's telling the truth. Yeah. And you was, you was adamant from day one, weren't you? Yeah, 100%. What, you, did you just know from day one? No, I didn't know. I knew, I knew what I wanted. Yeah. And when I want something, I'm gonna get it. Yeah, yeah. So it was just one of them. I knew I was treated around the area, but my focus was one thing. Everyone could say what they wanted. I didn't really concentrate. A lot of people get distracted. I was like that in my yeah. own zone. I was like, nothing. Then even if I get injured or anything touching, I'm gonna do it no matter what. So it's just. I think anything in life, you're determined to do something. You're gonna do it. Was it? Was it all you? Was it? Or did anyone push you? No one really said to me play football. People said you're good. But I enjoyed it, I loved it. And as I said, I watched you right. Yeah, yeah. And that was when I was like, I was like you know what, he is having so much fun. And that's what I need to do. And I said, I'm, no one's going to stop me doing it. Yeah. Well, let's see, another thing I wanted to ask you, you didn't have the easiest childhood. I don't know the, the full, again, I've known you like since we was little, but I don't know all the details. You came over from Congo as a kid, was that right? Five years old. Five yeah. years old. Did you come straight to Margate or London first? No, I was in London first, yeah. And then you came down to Margate? For five years and then I came down here. And you didn't have an easy childhood, did you? No, easy. no, no. I, was, I didn't grow up with my family. Yeah, my yeah. My mum and dad, like, everyone expects, but um, I, I moved over, when I moved over, I lived with like, my auntie, another auntie and stuff like that. I never, I was never with my mum or my, my dad or anything like that, so it's just... I was passed around a bit and then a bit of abuse and all that, not like physically. Yeah, yeah. It was like from my auntie's partners and she changed partners every fucking two weeks. Yeah, yeah. I can swear on you, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. fine, yeah, that's fine. And, um, yeah, so I just really, I just like, fought to my, I got myself in, I went to a police station. And I said, like, I'm really struggling. I was only a kid, but yeah. I knew some, I knew it was wrong. You said that right, yeah. Yeah, so and that's when, I went in the home in London, past to past to home to home, and then some amazing people from Margaret came down and looked, me, looked at me and said, we want to take care of him. Because so. I teach kids, like I train kids here, and we're constantly trying to get the most out of the kids, trying to get them to perform well. And it's one of the things we talk about a lot, like even like yourself, you didn't have the perfect upbringing, you didn't have the perfect support network, but you achieved your goals, like you managed to get it, even without having that, that's amazing, like to, even without that support network. That comes within. It's within, within, yeah. Yeah, it's not, I had every excuse to go the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had every excuse to go the wrong way, but when you, when you're true to yourself and you know what you want, no matter what anyone says or does, and I always say that to kids, like, when, a lot of kids, they want to do it, but they don't really, you know what I mean? They, just, they want it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. You have to want something from within. It's got to be you. Yeah, it's got to be it's you. Be you. And it, as I said, there's a lot of kids, they, they got their mum and dad and family around, but they don't do it. Yeah. But I know it doesn't matter where you come from. If it's in you and nothing can stop it, if you really want it, nothing will stop it. So I, I, I don't, I, when people use things that like I didn't have a mum and dad or whatever, yeah, don't get me wrong, it's important to have that around me, but yeah. you miss some lessons, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But, if you want to do something, as I said, God is good. If you're good in there, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah, because I remember as kids as well, like, like, we have other amazing kids in this area, mm -hmm. really, like, top Better players than me. But that's what I was going to yeah. say, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I would, as a kid growing up, there was players... I wasn't the best. Yeah, yeah. You know it's, it's mad. Yeah. It's mad. So, because you go through different stages in your life, and if you lose your focus at any point, remember, you're a kid. Yeah. You just play for fun. 
and then it gets to a level where you want to take it seriously. You're going to take, I, from day one, from when I kicked it, I was like, boom, my focus, I'm going to get to the Premier League, yeah. no matter what anyone does. And like, say for instance, you get loads of dis distractions and some people, they go that way, you know what I mean? And then, then they say, oh, I could have. Well, it's not about that, is it? Yeah. <laughs> So, w w as a kid, you got spotted by Chelsea. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you got spotted by them? Uh, Twelve. How did they spot you? Played down the road. Um, played against, I think, King Kingfisher, one of them team. We won five nil. I scored three and set up two. And the Chelsea scout and the Charlton scout watching. The Chelsea scout said to me after the game, "Yeah, we want to take it down and have a look." See, that's a, this is another thing I hear quite a lot because obviously being in Margate, being from this area, and I wanted this interview to be about the, growing up in this area. And you hear like, oh, you know, I get spotted round here or there's not opportunities round here. But someone else I know has just been spotted by Crystal Palace and signed for them. You were spotted by Chelsea, so it's achievable. It's obviously, it is possible. Yeah. You've just got to be good enough. No, there's loads of people good enough. Yeah. It's just if you've got a work ethic or there's loads of talented people. Like, you remember, like, remember Josh Kinsella? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he? Yeah. Top, he's one of the best players yeah, the quality player, yeah. Give him the ball, but yeah. you've got to work hard. Yeah. You've got to keep that going because when you step up a level, you have to improve and improve and improve. Yeah. So, a lot of people can't do that. They're like, oh, it gets too much work and I can't bother with it. So, I don't, I don't believe, remember, Margate is not a bad area. No, no. <laughs> There's people who come from worse places than Margate and yeah. do good in life. So, it yeah. doesn't matter where you come from. As I said, once again, it's what's in you. Yeah. So, if you want to do something, don't let your area stop you, you know what I mean, where you're yeah, from. Yeah, 100%. Remember, you obviously remember where you're from or where you grew up or whatever, but don't let where you're from say, right, well, I can't do it. Anything is achievable, you know what I mean? So you see, you hear these stories all the time when people look, you look at their background, you're like, really? That person come from that? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, like, yeah. Like, I suppose that's the good thing about football. You look at the premiership, everyone's got a different story. Yeah. They've all come from bad upbringings or from countries that you yeah. wouldn't think would, you know, get, make them to the premiership, but they've got, they've got there. Um, so yeah, you was at Chelsea as a kid, twelve from twelve yeah. until sixteen, 16 yeah. and then. So how was it at Chelsea as a kid? Good players there. Yeah, it was good players there, and um, you know I learned a lot there. It taught me a lot, but I thought I had every chance of getting there because I worked hard. I yeah. worked hard, and I just. You thought you was just going to transition straight into? No, it. I didn't think I worked hard enough. But yeah. There's other politics in football. Yeah, yeah. That's try and stop you from making. It. So yeah. you know what? When they release me. They took on Ian Pullman. Oh uh, yeah. From here. Remember me and Ian Pullman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, he was, I knew he was at Chelsea. He With got, me. He got taken on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same team. Yeah. I, he got taken on. And I, I got released. That's mad. So, um, I was, I, you, everyone knows I'm a better player. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was, he's pushed more. We know the politics. I'm not going to get, well, if you want me to get into it. Um, we had Danny Jeffries. Tally, boy. They're pushing the pain, his family giving them blah blah blah. Everything. I think they looked at me as oh, he comes from a children's home. I think they looked at me like that. He comes from a children's home. He's a bad bad egg, whatever. Because if you come from a children's home, you're a bad egg apparently. Yeah, yeah. But that's what that's the mentality back then, and I think that had a lot to do with me not getting taken off. Because they, yeah. the, the excuse was that I was too small. Do you mean you know me, right? Yeah. How high can I drop? Yeah, and yeah. How yeah. many times do I beat anyone in here? So, yeah. Yeah. And when they said that, I was like, okay, cool, no problem. So at that time, I left Margate and I went to um, live in Croydon with a foster parent or whatever because I need to get out of this area because the police were really on my case. Yeah, yeah. They're blaming me for everything, like any small thing. They just pulled me over and tried. Anyway, so when I moved there, I was rigging up clubs for trials and ended up at Bristol. That's good. And I remember you signing, going over to Bristol. And then you had like, was it one or two seasons where you didn't play too much in the first thing? No, in the first, yeah. And I'm then coming on, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. And then it was, uh, was it Brian Tinian took over? Brian Tinian. The first team. Good memory. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I, was, I followed it all. Obviously, yeah. I, was, I was there, yeah. wasn't I? And then uh, then you went on a mad season, scoring loads of goals, wasn't it? Yeah. That, that season was metal. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was mental. But um, yeah, it was a big. I knew the manager liked me. He was one of my teammates the year before. Yeah, yeah. So he always said to me, oh, I don't know why the manager's playing that role. I'd rather you. Then. Yeah. But yeah, when he got took over, he said that you're playing for me next year. I said, yeah. pull me in his office. I went, can I have the number eight shirt? Sure. <laughs> yeah. He said, yeah. So I was like, yeah, he wants to be playing. They play me every game. That's so, it. Get given the opportunity, yeah, you take it. And I took it. So yeah. I didn't let him down. 
Yeah, and you had a good season, a real good season. Yeah. I say I followed the whole thing. Mm. And then from there you went to Reading, yeah. big signing. Yeah. When you got to Reading, I noticed the difference straight away because I watched you play when I was watching you play at Bristol, mm. and I went to your first game at, at yeah. Reading, Plymouth, yeah. when you scored. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I noticed straight away after the game it felt different to Bristol. Did you did you feel like you you was in the big time then? I know no. when I know when I didn't feel because I did. No, you can tell but you're looking at me. Yeah. But I didn't feel that way. You didn't feel that way. Because I hadn't reached my goal yet. You still feel like you had, yeah. Yeah, you had another I step. I hadn't reached my goal yet. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it's just like being at Bristol. In my mind. That's for mad. For you, yeah. from the outside, it was like, now I can look back and see how people look at things. Yeah. I can remember, I mean, because you came down with Mr. Mr. Wolf, yeah. Brenda, yeah, and, yeah. Like, everyone, they all came down. Yeah, they, yeah. We went TGI's after. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Right? But remember, I did the same. Yeah. It's just, I didn't yeah. give a shit. Yeah. Like, I, we lost the game. It was, we, yeah, 2-1 we, we lost, it? 2-1, yeah. yeah. And like that day, I remember because you you probably felt it didn't feel no different to me. I just thought, right, cool, I can score at this level. Yeah. Let's go again. You know what I mean? Let's go again. Yeah. Let's go again. That's all I thought. It's I thought it's mental. But Re- I tell you what, Reading was throughout all your whole season, your whole career. Mm-hmm. Reading as a fan, like watching, was for me is one of the most enjoyable times in your career. But that's did weird. You, did you enjoy it? See, that's weird because you say that Reading was looked yeah. great for me. I was not happy there one bit. Really? Yeah. I'm really surprised. See, see? But everyone says that. Everyone when I speak to them, they're like, I read it, you, yeah, you look like you loved it. I hated the club. That's not mad. that club, but yeah. within the people within the club, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. You know, some of the stuff I was going through and all that, I didn't enjoy it. And then, but everyone says that, right? You know, when you, when you announced your retirement, I saw it on Twitter. Yeah. And I went through all the comments that everyone had left, yeah. and loads of them were reading, yeah. talking about that season. Yeah. Was it was it 106 points? 106 points. 106 still big, the record. Still no. the record, yeah, yeah. Going, going up from the yeah. championship to premiership. And the, the impact you had on their fans is crazy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and the fans are brilliant. Really. Yeah, that's all good. I'll say, every, every club I play for, the fans, they were always good to me. I was one of them players where, if I, I remember playing against like Sheffield Wednesday for someone else. And them not getting on me. Yeah, as yeah. soon as I got there, they're all happy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm one of them players you like to have on your team. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to play, be against you. Know because I mean? you're passionate. Yeah. You're passionate. Like sure, you say, you say Ian Wright's your favourite player. And yeah. you, like I see, you try to play a bit like him with that I same sort of passion. I play with I play with the same passion. Enjoyment and passion, yeah. yeah. That's because we love football. Yeah. You know you're I mean? a, fan, a fan's player. Yeah. Yeah, you play like a fan almost. That's why we all are. Yeah. We all are fans that's, first. That's true. So. That's true. Um, so, yeah, then you got promoted with Reading. And then, was your first game in Premiership against Borough? Middlesbrough, yeah. And you scored on your day before the the winner, yeah. Three two. Yeah, mad. Yeah. So when you, okay, so you got to the Premiership, did you feel like, this is it, you've done it? Now, when I scored in the Premiership, I, I was in shock for about, I don't know, I was in shock for weeks. I was like, we're playing in, I'm playing in the Premiership. Yeah. I'm like, I'm here, I'm yeah. here, I'm here. Because it's every boy's dream. But it was, yeah, it's just like, then you miss the come, I'm, and then I'm starting missing the, the. I started looking back at the way through yeah. like the story, but then other things come with that. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah it was just like unreal. But you got to be careful, ain't you? Because you don't want to take your foot off the gas. No. You don't want to get too carried away. No, I didn't get carried away with the Premiership. I just got. I just like. I was proud of myself. Yeah. I mean, I was proud you of achieved myself. Yeah. You really achieved something. I was proud of myself. I showed myself I can achieve anything I want. Yeah. So. Yeah. From that I, moment, I know. I, from that moment, I said to myself, "You put anything in front of me, I'll get through it. I'll do, get to where I want to. Yeah. No matter what, I'll yeah. go through anything. I know what it takes. So. Yeah. Your first season in Premiership was pretty good, wasn't it? You had a couple. Did you have a couple of injuries though. Was it in? I came back from a broken leg in my first game. Remember, I came on oh, second yeah. half for, for Kitson and got injured. Yeah. I just literally come come off crutches what two weeks before. I did feel like. The manager favoured Kitson and Doyle a little bit more. Did he? He favoured them, didn't he? Yeah, but the fans didn't, so they don't matter to me. But the manager was cool. Yeah, the manager was fair. To be fair. Yeah. To be fair. <laughs> if they get um, the team's winning, yeah, and you're on the team, you're saying yeah, yeah. that's the only club I played for where the manager, if the team wins, the team stays the same. Yeah. Unless there's injuries or suspensions. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Like that. That's the only manager. Only one in my career. That's mad. Yeah. They don't want that. Like nah. Yeah. You have to try and keep people happy and that. Yeah. So you got you had a few seasons in the Premiership. Mm. You played for England on the twenty ones. Yeah. Did you, and I remember thinking, 
There, there was a period where the main team, first team, they had short strikers, weren't they? And I remember, Leroy's got to get his call up. Yeah. Got to get his call up. You must have been thinking, this is your time. Right. I won't say now why. That's for another time. There was no reason for them not to pick me. They, I know the reason, but I'll say that another time. I'm yeah. sorry I can't tell you. No, that's right. Save it for the book. No, it's not even for a book. There's going to be a time where I can open up about it. Um, literally, yeah, they picked a, champ a strike from the championship because they couldn't pick me. Apparently. I was can't say. So. Yeah, that's a real shame, isn't it? That's because that, that's like the last little thing. Do you, do you feel... No. No? No. You're still happy? No, happy. Still because happy. Because I know I was good enough. Yeah. It was other people, you know you're good enough, you know you're good at something, you, other people stop it, they're in the power, that's cool with me. You know what? I know I was good enough. You still like, You went another way. Yeah. It's cool. You, you know? still you still play Premiership, yeah. still good enough. Yeah. Scored at Old Trafford. Yeah. That must be mad, scoring at Old Trafford. Yeah, I didn't feel like that. Well, when people tell me after, now I look back, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I did it. Right? That's right. You scored at Old Trafford, right. you scored at Stamford Bridge. Yeah. These are like things that the kids dream of. Yeah, I know. But when you're a professional, you don't think like that. It's just another game and you just yeah. focus. But now I can look back, yeah, you know what, I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah mad. Yeah. So, a few seasons, you, you moved around quite a lot, didn't you? Yeah. On loan, quite different clubs. Yeah, whenever I wasn't playing, I'll go on loan. Because I always say, you're a professional footballer, the number one thing is to be playing. Yeah. So if you're on a bench for six months, you're not a professional footballer to me. You're just chilling, collecting yeah. your peas. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's it. Yeah. You're not you're not playing. It's funny, it just came out in the media this week, didn't it, with Michael Owen and with, and Shearer saying about Owen he was sitting on the bench and still getting paid even when he yeah, was injured for for a long time as well. You, Did, one one thing you, one thing I say about that when I read about it I was like, what? Michael Owen has had a great career. Yeah. No one can doubt his career, whatever. They, if he's shit, if his career is shit, then we've all we Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? And, but he shouldn't argue with Shearer and Newcastle fans because no. you're never going to win. No, you're going to win now. <laughs> Shearer's Mr. Newcastle. Yeah, just, yeah. Just leave that alone. He's done his thing. <laughs> Let it go. Yeah, yeah, mad. Yeah, so after moving around over base, you actually played abroad as well. Yeah, Greece. Greece. How did you find that? Greece was corrupt. It's just bunch of cheats using football to make money and uh, Man, I, saw, I watched your other interview and you said like the man was it the manager of the chairman came in came in the change room came in the change room and started saying stuff in Greek, you can't understand it and you was like what's that and the player said oh we want you to kick the ball out or whatever like yeah. when the ball comes in you kick it out for a corner yeah that's yeah. unbelievable isn't it? No, I, was, I couldn't believe it I thought like sometimes when people say things remember when you play in different countries how we say things how we mean it you say you might say the right words how it's said, said in them words, but that's how you mean it. Yeah, it? yeah. And um, I thought it was all like, but I was thinking, oh, he just got his words mixed up, whatever. <laughs> I got on the pitch. He didn't get his words mixed up. That's unbelievable. Uh, just a bunch of Greece is just a bunch of cheats making money from football. That's it. Mad. And you played in Thailand as well. Thailand, yeah. Good. Yeah, good experience out there. Yeah. You had a crazy life. Mad. Not crazy life. Not, well, life's beginning now. So I've had a crazy career. Yeah. Crazy career. Yeah, yeah that's it. Um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. Like Thailand was a good experience. It's good to see that side of the world as well. How people live and hand uh, live as perfect. Literally, professionals just live like normal people. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, they they don't they can go anywhere. No one no one's taking pictures of you or whatever, asking for anything. You can go anywhere in Thailand. No one really cares. You're just a yeah. normal person. Yeah, yeah. And then another thing I wanted to ask you. I think I haven't asked you. Mm. You signed for Marbe. Did you play for Marbe? Yeah, I did for three, four times. I don't know. So that was last year or year yeah, before? No, no, literally, I signed just to keep training and take it on. Okay. I signed, but I really wasn't getting paid. Did you play here? Yeah, I played here two, twice, and once, what have you? Okay, like, yeah, yeah. And another game, I think, yeah. So just I was just to take over, but then, then it comes to a point I was just like, mm, you know what, nothing's coming up that I really want to do here, so it's time to call it a day and move on. Do you, do you feel like you could still play at a decent level? Do you feel like mm, you still got it? I, yeah. My physically, yeah, I'm um, not, yeah, of course. My know how if I want to, but still I don't, do. don't want to, don't want it. No, nah, I'd rather coach. She wants me to, but I don't want to, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, mad. Um, so I'm a bit sweaty. I've literally just me finished too, training, yeah, I mean, yeah, well. it's hot in here, isn't it? I've just finished training. So, um, so now you're retired, what, what's the plans? Are you working? Yeah. Well, first of all, I know this is like the sort of question that everyone asks, and you're not meant to ask. Do you earn good money? Did you earn good money in your career? I know you, you at some stages you're earning good money, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Good money. Yeah. So has that set you up for life? Has it made you comfortable, or is it you still got to work? No, I will still work anyway. You no still work anyway. Yeah. No matter what, what you're gonna do is chill at home. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, now I just want to. Now I'm helping out with a football club, um, and I've got a management company running up and running with my partner. She's helping me. Um, so what you managing professional players? Not just football. Though. Is it entertainment as well? Yeah. Not just so what's that? Do you like singers and stuff like that? Anyone. Anything. Anyone that wants an opportunity that we we see talent, then we can help. So, so someone, an entertainer or a sports person comes yeah, to you? Don't, and don't just have to be sport. It could be sport anything. as well. It's sports and entertainment. So it, any, anyone that was interested in that. And what do you do for them to get them opportunities? Yeah. What, with your contacts and you've got? Through our contacts and then pushing them and then we'll see what, what happens. Yeah, is it going well? Well, I've got, yeah, it's going well. A couple yes. coming up, so it's good. Good. I really appreciate you doing this interview. I, I say, I want you to interview because you're a kid, you're the same age as me, kid growing up year in this younger. Year younger, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> growing up in this area, and I think it's an amazing story. And like I say, I feel like I was there at day one, like 12, 13 years, mm. and now it's like it's like a finish off, end of career. Yeah. So I thought. That's all it is, just end of career. End of career. That's yeah. it. Life goes on. It's mad. So. But I want to say well done because it's been an amazing journey watching from. I, I come watch you at Bristol and. Really? Do you, know, do you know the first time I went down to Bristol, I, I straight away I thought, this is mad. Yeah. The amount of people coming up asking for autographs. Yeah. It was like, cause it felt like it, only a minute before we was hanging in out. In the park. In the park, hanging playing out. Playing hockey. Yeah, playing hockey, yeah. Remember, yeah. You still got them hockey sticks? Yeah, I still got them. Yeah. That, 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 <laughs> that my parents had in the loft. <laughs> but yeah, it's mad. And I remember just seeing everyone come up to you asking for autographs. And I, even, this is at Bristol. And I'm thinking, right, Leroy's made it. Nah, <laughs> and that, that was only at Bristol. That was, I was at Bristol. I was, I was, a, I was still a YTS, I wasn't even a professional, yeah, I didn't yeah. even have a professional contract then. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's been a, been a journey like, 